Welcome everybody to the Saints Gaming Arena. My name is Seymour. With me is Daniil and we got ourselves the Toronto XP number four. I'm so excited to be here back at my old stomping grounds watching some local teams bat at this new game of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and it's going to be a great one. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling fantastic. Especially since the last XP. This is really going to be a lot more appreciation for just game people. You know, when I think about what my favorite parts are of Sports, any kind of competition. It's just the idea that people can come together, organize the tournament, and just have a great time. And if you've never come to an event like this, I'm sorry to say, you definitely are missing out, but hopefully through this stream, we can do our best to make you feel like you're here. And if you're going to be here, if you are here, we hope you have a great time because we are about to get started. It's fantastic. Yeah, we got our first round getting set up on the main stage right behind us, and it's right going to be, uh, uh, it looks like it's going to be GFK versus the Team 6. Now, GFK, a team of, I, I'd say more so locals to the Canadian area. you got Shots, Rage, Warmer, Valerium going up against Team 6, another group of locals to the Canadian area. And Shots, actually, at one point back in the day of Black Ops 3, he used to play on these Team 6, uh, this Team 6 with a lot of these players, so it's fun to see. But Team 6, Fiend, you're looking at Bozy, Bitcoin, and Toons as well. So for starting off in a best of five versus two local teams, this is exactly what we're looking at for some grassroots Call of Duty. Absolutely, grassroots, I think it's the only way to go when it comes to having a competition. Who cares where, when, or why? Uh, ultimately, if you have two teams, they know each other. You said they have history together. Yeah. That always makes a match 10 times more exciting. You know what also makes a match more exciting? Listen. I, as far as I know, I feel like this is the first Black Ops 6 land we've even seen. It well, this is the second land Close that enough. I don't know of. First <laughs> land in Canada, though, that is going to be happening. We had a land a couple weeks ago over in uh, Columbus, the kickoff tournament. It was a good one, and actually we have a team that was representing... Uh, not St. Clair, but will be representing St. Clair that was present at that mm. land. It's the St. Clair green team of Cootie, Sea Watts, Ruper, and KB. It was KB, Ruper, and Cootie all together were playing okay. and came second place at that kickoff wow. tournament. So that's a team I'm going to have my eyes on. We got two St. Clair teams today, St. Clair green and St. Clair gold. And, and on my my honest opinion and don't tell the saints guys that said this but I, I think that that green team is something that i'm going to be looking at today to really make some waves but for all the logistics of today's tournament for those tuning in for this txp it's going to be 16 teams that we have battling out through pool play into bracket play which is going to be a double elimination across today and tomorrow mm -hmm. it's 4.5k of prizing broken down into 3k in first 1k in second 500 dollars for that third place spot so it's a lot to play for here for the local at St. Clair and for the teams that are, you know, attending, we do have a good roster or a good set of teams playing in these pool plays. And I think that, you know, I already said Saints Green and Saints Gold are kind of one of those teams that I'm going to be looking at for sure representing St. Clair. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have teams like Day by Day, A Slim's teams. We have Conestoga showing up with yep. Jay Ray and his squad, Aspire, Pele, put on such a good performance at TXP3 that I expect him to play well at TXP3. P4 as well, but we also have some teams that I'm going to be learning this weekend, and I'm sure you're going to be learning oh, too. Yeah, for sure. That I'm excited to see the underdogs show up, and for GFK versus Team Six, our first team on stage, these are some of those underdogs. Yeah, and speaking of the teams that you were looking out for, you're not the only one looking at the Saints. Just talking to some of the other local community members here, um, Saints are kind of the favorite ones to take the whole thing. Um, but there's some other teams that people are talking about. One that sticks out to me is Old Fam. I'm being told that this team is really not to be underestimated. They have they're, you know, really up-and-comers. They have some impressive results from the past, and um, they're pushing some really strong competition against those who they've played against. So that's a team that you don't want to really count on, especially if you're playing against them. Underestimating people in Call of Duty doesn't really mix well. No, it doesn't. There's not a lot of time to recover from your <laughs> mistakes, you, especially in Search and Destroy. But again, this yeah. is Black Ops 6. Learning experience for most people here, especially me, especially everybody, um, it's, it's the first time for a lot of people I yeah, see how that goes. and I, you know, first for me for jumping on a desk and casting Black Ops Six, I'm super excited to kind of get hands on and you know how this split team game is going to play at a local and from the casting booth, and I think that's what I'm excited for. For a lot of people who are showing up, they were a little bit, I'd say, worried because we got Hardpoint, Search and Destroy, and Control yeah. being played. Yeah. So not a lot of teams have been practicing Control. I think I was talking amongst some of the teams that showed up today and. 
only a handful of them said they've played maybe a couple scrims this week because everybody's been grinding out hardpoint and search and destroy <laughs> putting control in the past but we got rank play coming out in season one and with rank play they announced that control is going to be on top of it so you know shut up brother jammer he's ahead of the curve just knowing we got to start getting on that control grind and it's just started here at our txp4 yeah and uh, you know i think this is a great place to really test your knowledge and apply these things there's no better place in the competition uh, maybe you know there's a lot of money on the line so hopefully you do perform better than you might be expecting but in an environment like this everybody's playing their 100 percent everybody's trying it's a great place to come up with strategies in a new environment there's new maps there's new guns there's all kinds of new things to experiment yep. with and speaking of new things one of the newest and most uh impactful things in black ops 6 is omnidirectional movement i want to hear yeah. from you what are your thoughts on that mechanic i love it i mean the first time i got hands-on with uh black ops 6 mm -hmm. uh down in the beta you know omnidirection was what everybody was a little bit worried about you know how is this going to break the mechanics of the Change game this scares time cod players. and it was actually quite delightful to play mm -hmm. with omnidirectional movement i mean it's just it's something that when you're playing the game being able to move in every single direction dive slide in every single direction mm -hmm. it feels fluid it feels like how movement should be <laughs> in video games all this time and, and honestly, I think it's going to be a big step up for what seems like the competition and uh, entertainment of, of watching the game. I'm yeah. sure we're going to see a Sliding ton of... Like we're going to see to so many turn-offs. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm looking forward to is, is all so the turn and burns. But it's, um, it's just a change that I think a lot of people are going to be very excited to master mm -hmm. this year. And it, be it so early on in the development of Black Ops 6, this is not going to be where we're going to see the master the mastery not of this all. movement just yet it'll be you know months from now towards like uh, the next year the new year maybe even into the new year that maybe we're going to be week. seeing <laughs> teams master the the omnidirectional movement it's it's going to be a while till we see that actually creativity come in towards this game and actually utilize the maps into the omnidirectional movements into any sort of place that you're going to be putting on but it's going to be exciting when we do get it yeah for sure and uh you know as an outsider to like the call of duty community i feel like black ops 6 is something special it's the first call of duty it's a treyarch game yeah treyarch they they have reputation for a reason you know and this is the first one i've really looked at and thinking you know Maybe I should give COD another shot. You should. It, it seems really fun, really interesting. And there's, it's like a breath of fresh air. And like you mentioned, the new mechanic, omnidirectional movement, while we're not going to be seeing any mastery of it anytime soon, at least we're going to have some fun watching the boys flop around and, and dive and see if they can come up with anything. Yeah, and I'm not going to say that people aren't going to be masters of this movement fast, but it's hard to call yourself a master when there's just so much to learn in this game. I mean, yeah. what we're playing now is going to be way different from what we're playing four to five months from now so it's just it's when you kind of take that movement and you apply it to strategy is when i'm really going to be excited to see how this the omni movement does impact the state of the game because people are going to be good at playing those individual fights but it's just how do you use it in that team setting and how do you use it to its full abilities well it's just it's too to be determined on how that's going to really impact things but we saw got a little bit of a glimpse of the teams on stage on the right side closest to uh, or where it says gfk that's where we're looking at shots rage warmer and valerian mm -hmm. on the left side of the stage that's team six fiend vozy bitcoin and tunes i'm excited to see this team six team play because you know tunes he is uh uh, a veteran when it comes down to the locals in uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. Toons has been around for so long, whether it was College Cod playing uh, uh, for the Canadian teams or not. But it's going to be a really big improvement for some of these teams trying to get used to uh, playing some BO6. And especially considering it took a while to get these games going. Let's see if they can shake off the rust. I'm so excited to see. We're finally in the action here, ladies and gentlemen. We're on hard point. Team 6 starting off strong, getting their feet on the point, And they're already doing a good job of trying to play for the spawns. They're sectioning them off. Bitcoin finding Rage, Mandy finding Valerium, and looks like now JFK, they're, GFK, they're actually kind of, uh, they're forced in a spot here that looks really uncomfortable, and they're fighting to get out of it. Yeah, and you see the Bitcoin just taking over and towards the top catwalk, the kills flowing for Team 6, 27 seconds already coming out from this hill, number one. Still lots of t time to fight for, and Manny with a nice five in a row to start off the Skyline hard point before falling, not able to really attend to those streaks. You're looking at the rotations right now for Team 6, and they were trying to work their way. They lose a couple of gunfights. They get flipped out, so they're going to have to work their way back 
across the map to break in towards P2, where Shelly God is sitting right now. Yeah, he's sitting there, not leaving for a second, finding nice picks, making sure that nobody's going to get into any positions that they're not ready. Oh, it's a nice dive coming from Bitcoin. Unfortunately, he gets shot on the Sky Tunes, doing his best to get revenge for his fallen teammate. Fiend, sliding around the stairs. You have the higher ground, but you're not going to win that fight. But again, he's going to get avenged by Shelly. Manny is going to be able to take down Rage, reloading, trying to find a way into the position. But GFK, they have such a good hold on this point. And again, it looks like it's on a bit of an elevation. Yeah, it's up above them. It's going to be hard for Team 6 to really fight their way in. But hey, they found their way in, and they're holding up custody for the rest of this time. They're sieging, and now they're trying to fight back for control. Um, and it seems GFK now is playing off the back foot. Yeah, it, playing off the back foot, but they do manage to break back in. I will say for GFK, so they're not giving this up for free for Team 6. They are able to battle for those spawns. In GFK, they have those spawns for now mm. for P2. But the issue is, is that location now over towards P3. They've given up the the spawns towards Team 6. They're going to be able to have that first initial setup, but as they do, it, this is the thing with Black Ops 6 right now is that because Ooh. a map like Skyline, it's so mixy. So many gunfights happening at all times. These spawns are so so breakable and you see that happen right there bitcoin's going to be hating a route all the way around and he's going to be able to try to help his team out by gaining these spawns for the next couple of hills and what i'm noticing so far is neither of these teams are able to really perfectly execute any strategies especially when it comes to the spawns it's really scrappy this game and i think you can tell based off of the map movement nobody's getting we saw them get kind of uh, cornered in one spot before gfk but now everybody's it's kind of a free-for-all they're just pouring into the site from any opportunity they can get valerium with a nice headshot take down bitcoin as he tries his make way onto the point but now gfk they fought hard and they are going to most likely take the rest of this point as team six already in position for the next hard points yeah they are and that early setup has been broken very quickly and often by gfk now armor's gonna already open up with a kill there onto manny so this is numbers for gfk to look to break this hill together shelly shut down and fiend's gonna double down with them fiend locking oh down God. the back spawns for team six that's gonna guarantee them a couple more seconds before gfk can group together and hit this hard point yet again but valerium through the bedroom not able to get past the jackal of bitcoin rage trades l but it's back and forth right now and with those close spawns team six just locking things down still 35 seconds so gfk off the respawn gonna have to put the pedal to the metal and group up a little bit because they are sending things one by one and it is just not gonna gain you any rep for this hill yeah fiend with the five kills as well doing such a great job of getting these pickoffs for your super important i still don't think they've even they've been able to take him out yet oh well there he goes now he's down but with gfk now playing for the next hard point he's still seeing if they can try to get their good exit and maybe be able to contest it. Seems that GFK was able to fight for the control and now they're looking for rotations. They're playing off the backside and in a really good position to find some kills right now. Fiend trying to open up the point but he's not going to be able to get the kill onto Shelly and he's going to fall down. Now nobody's on the point right now. Both teams still just trying to make sure they have full control of the hard point. We decide to connect to it. Shelly God is going to be the first on it. Sitting down but he's going to get the the backside now with a perfect angle of this for it. it's a completely empty everyone's getting stuck in all angles and this is where we're gonna see for skyline it's almost similar to a six star hard point that we saw last year towards the end of mw3 mm -hmm. there's only four hills in this hard point so you really rotate this map fast the engagements are quick it's very small and it, the spawns are very volatile like you, it is not easy to hold the spawns no, in this in map you saw team six they did a good, did a good job back in p3 and it has gained them a lead that they have now but even still gfk are punishing a lot of these rotations and they're keeping it close all gfk needs is one good hill and they're right back in this game and they already have the rotations over towards p2 which just popped yeah p2 this is where they want to treat right try to fight their way back into this game. Team 6, they're kind of scrambled and not really in this position right now. And I'm warm, actually going to take down Fiend. Definitely should not have been able to in that position there. Now running for a good position. Just holding this angle, making sure you can catch any heads that might pop up from that elevator shaft. And as the rest of the mission, Fiend goes up the ropes and tries to get the pickoff. Not quite on anything, but he's going to find it here where it really matters. Going to get taken down now, and they're going to continue the fight on the hard point. Yeah, for 30 seconds, Team 6. He 
need to figure out a way to at least stall those times. So you're not looking at a tie heading in towards P3, but they have that middle map control. You can already see that Shelly trying to work in behind, see if you can find some of these picks off the respawn. Fiend does get caught, and oh. Shelly's being quite the issue. Valerium, nice shots there onto Manny, and a couple kills here for GFK to start pushing Team 6 against the ropes. We got ourselves a tie game. We talked wow. about GFK. <laughs> they just needed that one rotation, they and it. they're right back into this game. Yeah, they, they really just took that point and really made it their own. They fought their way back to a really close game. I love to see hard points being close. With the Saints, you usually see them kind of steamrolling, but here, it's fantastic to see. And we did see that Manny has both the Artillery Barrage and the Hellstorm Missile, so uh -oh. you got some streaks for Team 6. And for a map like Skyline, with how open it is on some of these hills, yeah, you look at the kitchen. The kitchen is closed. There's a rooftop here, and same with P4, but you look at P1 and how important that is going to be for Team 6. If they come out to a lead, mm -hmm. that's going to snowball their lead. If they start falling behind, that's going to be their way back into the game. So they have utility now. They have the tools to make this happen. Yeah, and they're very effective. We're seeing Team 6 here. But they're getting inside. Nice pick off from Rage, trying to get the escaping tunes, fighting for his way out of that spot. But GFK, they're going to fight for the scraps of this point and try to rotate over to this next rotation on the hard point. Ooh, a nice chase down. He was running for him for super long. Finally going to find that mark. And now with a new hard point, GFK is going to get the first few seconds, but Team 6 not too far behind. They're going to be able to open up and get it right after. Now it's a bit of a war. They're in the trenches right now. This is not Call of Duty World War 2. This is Black Ops 6, but it looks like some classic trench warfare. The way they are fighting through here with the artillery, with the grenades, all these things exploding through, opening up things for GFK. They're going to finally have the hard point and hold on as long as possible so they can once again close the gap between them and Team 6. 175 to 150. It's not too far and it's very doable for this team. Right now, GFK still have that back spawn. They get broken mm -hmm. from the front and now they are trapped back oh, here. You have to be careful not to get spawn trapped now. If you're GFK, you're going to be sliding in trying to find a break and you do get it. Warmer not able to take out Manny. So that's Team 6 just holding and maintaining a lead, heading into now the third set of rotations, back over towards the hot tub. It's GFK to set up first, but they still don't have full control of the map. You have a player down and towards the kitchen. You have lost that catwalk as well. Valerium's oh. going to be trying to stay alive, but that's three in a row for Team 6. The break back into P1, and now only moments away for Team 6 to start pushing in towards the finishing stretch of this game. Yep, those holds for GFK were so critical. They weren't able to get the pickoffs. Thankfully, Team 6, they are not going to be able to find the hard point immediately. But now, it's a bit of a struggle. They're fighting for control, and all these picks coming from Team 6, it's going to be opening it up wide open for them to have full control of this hard point. Sliding around, we're seeing GFK fight back, but all that matters is the boots are on the ground for Team 6. Now, they're finally going to on them, and now, with that swiftly changing hands, like you mentioned, it's a small map, a lot of changes, the rotations are really fast, you can have control, and then the next second, instantly, the other team is right back from you. Spawns are so fragile yeah. in this game. I, it is impossible sometimes to lock down those box spawns. You have to play so deep in anchor. Fiend's going to be spotted. The communication not there in time for Warmer to react. So you do find a way in if you're Fiend. And Valerium's trying to hunt this one down. He has the help from Rage. So GFK trying to stake Ooh. their claim towards them to slide like in. And Valerium shuts down another one too. He's the only one pushed up. But it's three down for Team 6. And now GFK trying to st bring their way back. That was a beautiful slide. You saw the way he angled towards him and started making those shots. I think that clip alone, that moment, really sells this game for me. But now Manny running through, finding a critical pickup, and the site is open now. Whoever wins this fight is going to be able to fight for the rest of this hard point, and Team 6 getting control of it for now. But GFK ready for the comeback. Team 6 breaks in for the scrap time. Only person here to really contest is Shelly. You get all 15 seconds, you're pushing around 230 points, only 250 mm. to take the win in this hard point. So Team 6 are really close to putting this one away, and GFK just hasn't been able to hold a hill even when they do get that break in, and the kills are starting to look 
a little bit more one-sided for Team 6. Shelly has been good. 38-23. and 23. Can it be enough to allow the team in? It's three down for Team 6. But with those spawns being a little bit flipped and Fiend is going to spawn out. Do they read Fiend in the flank? Coming through around this oh one. God. Fiend finds one. The trade from Shelly. GFK are fighting for their lives. They had such a good hold on it, GFK. But Team 6 were still able to weasel their way in. And now they have full control. 236. Now they're so close. Just 10 more seconds to win this game. GFK, it's now or now. Never do or die sliding through. Oh, he misses the nade. It's gonna bounce back, but it's not gonna matter. He's stunned, but he's still fighting, running away. GFK, they're sliding and diving in. In fact, there's one more on this point, just stalling for time, but no time runs out. Team six was able to hold control of that hard point despite GFK's best efforts. What a fantastic game. Super. And you're throwing yourself at this hill if you're GFK at that moment. Literally, and, oh, he was oh, diving. <laughs> I'll say, all things considered, you're able to do that in this game with the mechanics of that movement, but it's just it's not enough for GFK, unfortunately for themselves. I think they just get a little bit of an unfortunate spawn there from Fiend. Mm -hmm. He spawns over towards the back of P4 when you were expecting everybody to be spawning over towards P2. And nobody gets the raid on the spawn. Fiend gets behind. It distracts them enough for the rest of the team to break in. And for, for Team 6, when they get into the hills, mm -hmm. they just were able to garner maybe 20 to 30 seconds more than what GFK were able to do. And that is just keeping them in the lead, maintaining that advantage throughout that Skyline hardpoint. It's very fundamental from GFK. You can tell that they've been practicing mm -hmm. and uh, they looked really put together for that. Yeah, fantastic. There, there's so many points I want to bring up, but the first thing at the very least is just the way these micro interactions go and how they add up over time and that really won the advantage for Team 6. For example, like we saw all those holes that uh, GFK or GFG were trying to do. They were like in these specific spots watching for the rotations and then Team 6 would run by they're not getting the kills though, and in fact, yeah. Team Six would turn around and get the kill instead. You know, it's these things that add up, and those add to those marginal up, up to like 30 seconds of time, like you were saying, and those leads ultimately lead you to a victory at the end. Yeah, and I, I do take a look at the vetoes right now. We're heading into Search and Destroy for map number two. We got to rewind Search and Destroy back to Skyline for the control. Mm -hmm. If we go to a map four, it's Rewind Hardpoint, and then a Skyline Search and Destroy. So it seems like we only have two maps that we're going to be playing throughout this whole best of five. But for a Rewind Search, looking at the way that GFK played, mm -hmm. when it was slowed down, when they were able to set down, set up, Shelly God was looking fantastic, especially for the sure. backline, making sure that those spawns were intact for the team when they really needed it. Although you were losing a lot of fights inside of that hill, you were maintaining some good presence in the back of the map. And for something like Search and Destroy, now when we're going to be switching it up to a lot more of a patient game mode, somewhere where you're thinking about maybe bringing things back. If the team is more Search and Destroy oriented, we've seen teams, especially at the start of Call of Duties, mm -hmm. really excel at this game mode. So for a team like GFK, they had what it takes to take that hard point. It wasn't a blowout by all means. Not at all. So going into this map number two, they're just looking to find where the weaknesses of Team 6 are. And a lot of it came down to how scrappy those hard points were. It was not clean for Team 6. And if you keep it scrappy in a search and destroy, sometimes you'll be walking away with a 2-on-1 -one -one or a 1-on-1. -one -one. And mm -hmm. I think that for GFK, they're going to be feeling a lot more confident in the search and destroy, knowing that they were walking away with a lot of those late breaks. Honestly, I couldn't agree with you more. Just the way uh, GFK was even playing that really scrappy hard point. But they were playing things like tactically, like pretty slow, watching the angles, seeing if they can get rotations to break off. So I feel like going to search and destroy, their play style naturally might be more favored for this tempo. Um, it was a lot scrappy on that uh, hard point map. But again, if we try to take things a little bit more slow, more controlled, and when you're dead, you're dead. No, yeah. no respawning right behind you, coming back and sliding through and getting a kill. I think GFK, like you said, they might be able to pull through. And despite, um, you know, Team Six winning Game One, I actually do, just based off of what we saw, I do favor GFK going in this one. I wouldn't say I'd give a favor to either one of these teams. I, we're still learning these teams, and for Search and Destroy, it's such a change up in game mode, you have players who are search and destroy masterminds. Mm. So you really never know who's gonna show up at these locals in a game mode like Surge. But for Rewind, when you're looking over towards the break into the worst the eight bomb site, Bitcoin just leading the way with the Jackal in hand. It's quickly traded, but on the hunt, the rest of Team Six oh, just wow. continuing to slay outrage in a one versus three. They know where this last player is, and even though you got a GPR in your hand, it might be an AR world, but up close <laughs> like that, the SMGs are gonna fry. Is it too late to take back my prediction? Because, uh, you know, I think you're right. It's a, it's a new game, new teams. There's a lot of learning to be done. 
but GFK, they just weren't able to show up very well in this first round. Team 6 is going to take them in a very confident fashion. I believe it's just 3-0 three to, uh, three to zero there. They're only losing one of their teammates. And as we get ready for this next round, we're going to see them switching sides. Maybe this is super attack heavy. Who knows? We're going to have to wait and see what GFK has in store for us on the offensive side of things. Okay. Uh, they're going to be pushing through. Nades coming out. They're going to be fighting for control over here on this point. Breaking through the doorway. Who knows what's on the other side? So the stuns are for a nice stun out. Should connect there onto Shelly. Man, he's not going to follow it up. And Fiend is the one to drop first blood for GFK. So Manny's going to have to double back. See if he can patch some of these holes. He's going to spot across the 18 Wheeler, a member of GFK. And it looks like he's going to try to track them down. But I like this from GFK. Let's get that bomb down at A. See if you can stake your claim in a post-plant setting. Ooh. Baited. And try to bring this one back three on three. Yeah, baited that door open. What pulled back. And now going through, finding a nice rotation, getting the kill onto Manny. Going to be opening this game up just a little bit more. Okay, two down on the side of Team 6, just one on the side of GFK. But time's running out. They still have to find the plant. Rage is getting taken out by Manny. Rotations are going insane right now. Players are going all over the map. But we're seeing the defuse coming out from TF. He or just Team hops 6, it. But GFK, they're going to be able to find the last pickoff and get the win. Yeah, it's uh, one of those situations where you don't have time. Mm. If you're going to jump that bomb, you got to jump in. You got to jump in now. But uh, GFK came at that really smart. The way that they find that first blood onto the A bomb site, it's going to mm -hmm. draw Manny back from pushing in towards blue. You had the rest of GFK trying to overextend into the spawn of Team mm. 6. And as soon as they do, and that bomb goes down, you have good coverage of limiting where Team 6 can retake from. And they're really forced to fight for back generators. See if you can get into those close corridors. But GFK did a good job at fighting those ones out. You win a lot of gunfights. You stack up together. The 2v1s were smart and well-timed. And they're going to kick this one off also with a first blood. Valerian, though, he gets traded. Yeah, traded out. Now it's a 3v3 here. Looking around the map, we're seeing everybody holding one angle, trying to fight their way back in for these, for these sites. We're seeing the Bitcoin sliding his way through. He's not going to get picked off. He's going to be able to survive that rotation. Looking now, Rage holding this alleyway. But he, they're going to just miss each other. Toons almost beating his enemy on the other side of this field. But now we're seeing perspective of Fiend. Holding down this point, wing. if anyone can find their way into the store, but everyone's playing super slow right now. They are, and GFK, the patience is, you know, we're putting a lot of emphasis onto making sure that that B-bomb cannot be hit. So they're mm. forcing a plant from Team 6 on towards A. When that happens, it's a three on three. You play it equal. You try to play for the trades here. But I like this from number four, Fiend or Bitcoin. He is going to look to play so aggressively, but he gets caught by Warmer. And that's an advantage now for GFK. They just hop uh -oh. it right away. Are they going to check this one? I take back my take back. GFK, they're showing up really well so far with the defuse. Or did it get interrupted? No. No, it got diffused. <laughs> the animation ended. The round is still going on, but they were able to take that 2-1 to one for GFK. And like you said, they were forcing that plant over on A. They're manipulating Team 6 just through sheer pressure of where they're holding. And yeah. I always love to see teams playing more... Uh, or mentally. I like that kind of game. It's not a bad call from Team 6 whatsoever. You had a player pushed up in towards the dumpsters. You're looking for whoever is anchoring in the back, making sure that that flank cannot come out from Team 6. Mm -hmm. It's just you don't expect... Um, I think it was warmer to be that deep in their spawn. I think, Fiend, you poke your head up for a second with the headshot multiplier and the ARs in this game. You lose it fast. So for Team 6, it's unfortunate to drop that round, but it's only a one-round lead. I like this first blood coming out from Toons. It's a second from Manny. Rage even is the one to go down there. It's a, it's a nade to take him down. So that is going to put GFK in a really tough spot. Look how far apart separated oh these God. two are. Yeah, it's a 2v4 situation, and you're basically doing a one-on-one -on -one mission. Again, this is a stealth mission. This I was going like to say, it's like solid. four corners. Yeah. You're playing four corners on the map. You're trying to figure out where to go. <laughs> and look at this standoff here. They're both just through the door, thank God, but just staring each other down. So no bullets are going to fly yet. Valerium gets bored. He's going to be rotating. But if you look on the side of the map, you'll see Shelly got in a dangerous situation. Uh, he could get rotated on very soon but going through this door Valerian yeah. did not know someone was right behind him Shelly God gonna be able to get the trade at the very least and you can't afford any more trades because you're the last guy on your team so you go down that's the round 
have to do your best to at least get on the site. But I know Team Six is not going to let that happen. It's going to be a very difficult site to take, especially when Bomb is down and there's only 12 seconds Ooh. to get the plants off. As soon as Manny sees that, the communication, the collapse now for Team Six, just to confirm this kill safely. And then tie us back up in this rewind search and destroy a lot, a lot of pushback from both sides and a lot of adaptations coming there. I, I like the call from Fiend especially to push all the way in towards the restaurant. I think for that control of the streets, as, you, as soon as you find that first two kills, it really, again, just limits the options that GFK have. And although Shelly was able to take that kill... If Shelly wasn't as cautious in that moment and didn't wait that long, it mm -hmm. probably would have ended up being a free kill for Fiend watching through that drive through window. Exactly. Again, this patience is everything in it when it comes to social trade. But more than patience, it's also recognizing when to be aggressive. Like you mentioned, able to get two early round pickoffs yeah. that was invaluable for their strategy, and they were able to hold after that. But Shelly's going to take down. At least it's going to be trades all around. GFK down one over Team 6, but it's still relatively close on the number side of things. Three to two. You can definitely make that happen. Bomb is already already going down Manny getting the plant GFK have no choice but to answer now no plans towards B Manny's gonna be spotted and immediately I think the the names are a little messing me up that was actually Fiend who was caught in the corner there Manny's still alive so it's Manny and Bitcoin versus Rage and Warmer and it looks like Manny's or Bitcoin's actually gonna be caught so Manny is seven and two on a three spree just gonna have to play their life the defuse is gonna be jumped by warmer Manny's gonna spot this one slides out but the early shots from range gonna support warmer on that defuse to perfection and it's a 2v3 retake there from GFK able to get that defuse in time and for team six I mean unfortunately Fiend gets caught in a corner there it seems like your body pokes out a little bit to the player on the half wall but mm -hmm. It was a good call to just continue continuously hit this A site again and again. And see that B is just not what you want to go for, especially for these teams who are missing out on um, on trophy systems. As soon as there's a trophy system on B, there's really no chance, and you just do not want to test that right now if you're either, either of these teams. You know, that's actually a huge point. B, I can't really imagine how you would want to even approach taking that one without being able to use grenades or anything like that. At least A, there's all kinds of shelves and, and little pieces of corners you can hide behind, but B, it's wide open. It's just there. Yeah. And um, while holding it might be pretty easy, getting in there is really difficult, but Rage can be able to find one on the six. Fiend is going to go down. Now Manny through. Finding Valerium, actually getting the kill. Didn't think he was going to be able to find success there. Warmer rotating his way over to B. Now the teams are kind of scrambling around. And Bomb. Warmer's already sitting there. Is he going to look to play the kill? Jumps in the half wall. Manny should be able to trade. Shelly bringing things into a one versus one. Tunes across the map, sitting in a spawn. Showing some respect now to this player. And the information, Tunes actually spots him. Ooh, from behind, can you find it? Just going to do... Damage maybe, but not going to be able to find the kill. One on one, scramble. It's a race against time. Who's going to get there first? Or uh, they're, they're they're rotating around each other. They're mirroring each other's positions on the map. Well, well Shelly goes for the plant. Mm -hmm. So now there's time against Team Six. Toons is the one to have to make the play. Shelly mm -hmm. can just make sure you're checking this bomb on a swivel every 7.5 seconds. Is kind of where you're thinking about checking this bomb, or just before that, making noise, just scaring him. It, and like Toons that. knows how to play this all day long. So he's going to slide in, spots it, takes it face value. Shelly, he's just looking to play his life. He knows he has the time. He just needs to tag him and run away, Toons. <laughs> oh, no. Although, it's a good try, a valiant effort. Shelly's not letting that happen any day of the week. Unfortunately, when time starts running out, you just have to do what you can. And he ran for it. He knew he didn't even have to take that fight. Got out of there and just forced him away from the bomb. It's an objective game mode, ladies and gentlemen. You can chase kills as much as you want. But obviously, you know, Team 6 were fighting for the ability to get the defuse. He obviously wasn't going to sit there and let him defuse it. I really like how these teams are playing. The schemes, are, every round is a nail-biter. Nothing is guaranteed in this game, on this map especially. That's what I love about seeing new games and new teams, like we mentioned before. Yeah. Everyone's... Learning each other, learning the game, learning how they want to play things. And with this next round starting off, Manny's going to pick up the bomb, charge his way in. And it looks like they might actually be going for B this time. And 
looks like they're not going to be able to find much resistance as BFK, they're looking on A, and they're actually going to get the successful wraparound. They're going to be able to find the plant on B, relatively uncontested. Now GFK has to find the answer. You. Bomb is getting planted. Four on four for the retake. You have a player pushed through as well towards the truck. That's going to be Manny. Really aggressive. The door is going to open. They have the pinch wow. out, and Bitcoin's going to be spotted. Instant trade from Manny up top is Fiend absolutely beamed off that heady. Valerian just keeping this retake flowing for the side of GFK tunes. Going to be spot on the half wall. Still walks away with a kill. Swaps over to his secondary. It's not quick enough. It's Bitcoin. In a 1v2, bomb planted for you, but wow. Rage is going to read it. There's 11 seconds, plenty of time for the defuse, and GFK just continues to grow this lead, now up by three. That was really impressive. Again, even for both teams, GFK able to come back and get the defuse, despite Team 6 able to plant it without losing a single member. Granted, GFK didn't lose anyone either, but a full 4-on-4 four four retake, you don't yeah. see those very often, and it was always exciting to see, and I really like Team 6's approach. GFK, though, uh, able to just poke holes through that defense and offense. And they just pick it apart, and yeah. it starts with that pick towards the back of yellow. As soon as they open up that door, you look at the call, and you can visibly see the communication coming mm -hmm. out from, hey, there might be a guy pushed up here. Let me swing this door and you swing truck at the same time. And it was Manny, I'm pretty sure it was Manny or Fiend that was pushed all the way in towards back yellow and he gets caught. So just got to be more aware of that if you're team six. If that aggression is going to come through, you need to make sure it pays off. Just like we're seeing at the start of these rounds. It's a first blood coming out from Manny. And that's going to be a trade too. It's Shelly for Toons and... Stops the push towards A for now. Might be thinking about overextending to a plant towards B, but hasn't really been what GFK wants to do so far. Now, if they're getting information right now, I think his team is communicating that it's relatively open, but I don't think they know Bitcoin's right there, ready for the pickoff. He's not going to find it, however, stunned as well, forced to retreat, but now this is an opportunity. Uh, GFK able to find the plant, and Team 6 have to find their way back in. He's going to be subfought. Bitcoin finds two. It's Manny actually three in a row. Slides right over. Oh Manny God. for the ace in, in the round. And with the, so much time on the defuse, it's just Manny kicking it into gear for Team 6. An ace to keep them alive. 13 and 5 from the young man. If you want to win a round, that's how you want to win it. With an ace completely dominating and your team, they have to be, you know, cheering your name. The, the next, oh, yeah. You know, Food is on them. They're paying for everything for the entire trip to the land. Okay? My teammate aces in the round. That is absolute the clutch. gas. The opening pick and then the follow-up as soon as that bomb's going down for you to just find those two members on the site. Hops the half wall. Catches them basically with the pants down. And that's uh, GFK <laughs> definitely going to be feeling that force. RCXD. <laughs> RC car. <laughs> so up. RCXD streak being called in for possibly a first blood there at a Manny, but... It's going to be blown up. They get the information that Valerium's going to be here. You see the stuns of the nade just trying to disrupt this site. And Manny's trying to find that hole. See if you can open up with a kill. And he does. Manny, again, traded there. Valerium just keeping things even on both sides. The bomb has entered A. But you're still worried about the players around it. Rage is going to keep the trades going. Toons has to be careful not to go down. Yeah, now with Toons holding the bomb, fighting so hard, but there is one. I'm warmer, holding the angle super far away, but it's going to get traded out. Maybe Bitcoin is going to find, or read. Fiend is going to find the kill on him. And 35 seconds, you still have to find the plant, but he's so far from his team, it's going to be quite difficult. But he's actually going to find the kill regardless. Man, he's going to take out Rage from the side, and he has to look, find, uh, and commit for a plant. He knows Shelly by himself, and they're fighting. You have to go for the plant as soon as you can. 23 seconds, so you do have to hop this plant. Shelly's going to know this one as soon as you check over towards B. Bomb goes down at A. And now you're against the clock. Two versus one. Bitcoin's going to be spotted. The information now for both sides. Tunes not too disconnected from this one. They can fight Shelly on a two-man angle. And they just continue to throw shoulders. They do not want to give up a fight for a clean lead towards Shelly. God, wow. because as soon as you do, man, he drops. And it's a one versus one. Bitcoin versus Shelly. 25 seconds. 
And Shelly's just making so much noise, Ooh. wrapping around. Bitcoin's low, the slide back into the horse. Oh now, my but the God. pistol for Shelly and GFK taking map number two. I was just going to say, that round was not hopeless for GFK. It was a 2v1, sure, but one, they were relatively split apart. And two, he had plenty of time. He's right next to the bottom. He didn't have to fight to get towards it. He just to make sure that there's going to be no one there to stop him from defusing yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, Team Six, they were playing pretty aggressively. They wanted to get the kill when realistically they should have just waited to hear him, go for it, and then just... Go in and kill him. I agree. I mean, you're throwing shoulders. You have the information. You know exactly the way you want to play against this player. Uh, for Christ's sakes, you got Manny going 14 and 6 <laughs> for your team. He's trying to put the team on the back throughout this game. Trying his but best. it just didn't seem like the coordination was there for Team 6. You knew what they wanted to go for, especially in that last round. You plant the bomb towards A. You send someone over towards the defender spawn. You have somebody just dancing around the site. That mm. person on site just looks for information. And exactly. you're giving that information towards your second player. All you need to do is stay alive. <laughs> and that sets up Bitcoin for kind of a free kill on that side. As soon as Shelly gets that 1v1 opportunity, mm -hmm. you see his instant reaction is to jump in towards that A-bomb site. With how far away Bitcoin is, he has to respect that. You have to at least go check the bomb if he's defusing it. It's only 7.5 seconds. It might seem like a lot of time, but it goes by quickly, mm -hmm. especially when you're hesitating. So there's no fault to Bitcoin. You have to make that play. It's just Shelly read you like a book in that round. Yeah, and I I really like that about uh, Search and Destroy. Like, there's... It's a complete departure from uh, Hardpoint. Your team and your whole dynamic, your plans, everything really shifts to being a lot slower and communication matters so much more. And like you mentioned, there's a lot of information gathering and we saw yeah. it a couple of times and I really love to see it. You could tell I'm like a, a CS kind of guy. I love watching that slow methodical gameplay, but we saw it a couple of times where, um, especially it, it wasn't the last round, but maybe the second or third last round where yeah. JFK were pushing um, that point on B and you could see his two teammates were going up and they recognized, hey, nobody's here and you immediately saw the rotation come through and then they went for the plant. I love seeing stuff like that. Team six, unfortunately, I feel like they're stronger in the one-to-one -one gunfighting, but GFK, uh, whatever the factor was, I feel like they were able to really come together a lot better than teams on this. Or yeah, the retakes were very dynamic from the yeah. team, and you can see that the communication was a lot better from GFK in that moment, and it, it did show a lot in the hard point, too. I think that hard point mm -hmm. is just scrappy enough that you can get away with those mistakes of not being as together, just throwing bodies and winning those gunfights. And <laughs> that's kind of what we had for Team 6 in map number one. It's what drove them over the edge is their ability to just continue to slay out, mm -hmm. keep the kills in their favor, keep the opposite team rotate, on respawns, rotate, and rotate, rotate, rotate around the map. Now you're going in towards control. And for everybody who's tuning in for this one, it, it, this is actually, I think, the first instance that we're going to be seeing control in a competitive setting really? for Black Ops 6. So this is why I talk to the teams before we get on here. And it's just how much have you actually scrimmed control heading into this tournament, knowing that it's going to be one of the game modes. Some of them said we've been scrimming it for a week. We scrimmed <laughs> it like maybe one or two times. It's not a lot of reps under this game mode. And for Skyline in particular, our map three, this is a control map that is quite like the hard point, mm -hmm. going to have a lot of back and forth when it comes to the trading of kills. Mm -hmm. And because control has a limitation on lives, you have to be very aware of your throwing your life away in this game. And Skyline's one of those maps that you're kind of forced to play aggressive. You're forced to fight for that space because if not, quite like a lot of maps in this game, mm -hmm. You will be spawn trapped. So you want to avoid that spawn trap as fast as possible if you're heading in towards this skyline control and, and just make sure that you're continuing to fight for the top of your building. Maybe fight for those high ground pressures. Fight for inside the bedrooms. Make sure you're always trying to keep a player forward so that the other team cannot push that line forward and mm -hmm. spawn trap you in your own spawn. So it's going to be tough, I'd say, going into this control. I don't want to lean it in towards anybody's side because of how little people have been playing this game mode. Sure. Yeah, but it is going to be fun to see who's going to win it because nobody's going to know how to play it. I couldn't agree with you more. It's a super learning experience for everybody. Everybody, especially on the stage, a lot of these guys, like you said, super inexperienced control in this yeah. game, on this map. Who knows if these guys have any strategy whatsoever. I hope they do for their sake at the very least. For our sake, I kind of hope they don't because it's going to be a lot more exciting to witness. But Control, it's a nice happy meeting between Hardpoint and Search and Destroy where it's going to be scrappy. But you can't be too scrappy. You're going to run out of lives. And we're seeing Rage with the first blood starting strong. They're already fighting for Control of, well, the Control Point. Oh, it's tied one apiece. So we're guaranteed a rewind map four with whoever wins this is mm -hmm. going to be feeling that confidence, I'd say, heading into another respawn. But... 
uh, for the attacking side of Team 6, you see where both of the control zones are. One just around the pool area, the other one pushing deep into um, the opposite side towards, I think, the P2 area it looks like for the map. But um, this first side capturing the point doesn't look like we're going to have any information on yeah, what the I was uh, just wondering about control that. <laughs> progress is looking like. But it does look like Team 6 are getting progress. So yeah. A zone's getting worked on. Fiend's going to find another kill. Rage looking for an like, for, uh, avenue in from up top instead. Pushing past this one. So A just continuing to just leave this one open for GFK, but Rage hitting the flank at just the right time. They do break control. Yeah, complete wipe now. Uh, team 6, they're going to have to fight for their way back into the center of the map. Uh, if I had to guess based off of how long they're on that point, they probably have like maybe two two pips on that one that's gonna be my guess but they ultimately of course need all three and they're gonna be fighting really hard to find it unfortunately they're gonna get completely wiped a nice double trade is gonna come out but ultimately team six they're gonna be shoved all the way back into the opposite side of the map but they're already clawing their way back in another trade coming out for both of these teams and a nice cross angle they're gonna be finding two kills on the side of gfk unfortunately however uh team six they're still fighting respawning but they're not coordinating the response they're just coming in one after the other after the other i hope that works out for them as I, right now it's not as do i well 24 seconds you have to jump towards this what we do know for gfk they're fighting with a life disadvantage but they do have the time on their side so 17 seconds they're trying to keep team six away from this control zone bitcoin doing his best to fight for it but it is just constant trades coming up for gfk wow. just milking this time <laughs> keeping team six away from this control zone and it doesn't look like you're going to really have a chance. One last chance to slide in. Fiend's going to be shut down. And same with the round. So with that time limit dwindling, GFK taking the first round on defense. And I, I want to say that's really setting us up for, you know, what's going to be the rest of this game. I think that it definitely looks difficult to play offense on this. Yeah. But with us not knowing how many segments they got off of that one zone, we really don't know the impact of that potential round five, so it's going to be very important for these teams, I'd say, to try to win this in regulation. That was going to be my, my next kind of philosophical pondering. Just in a situation where both teams are completely inexperienced, is defense or offense harder? Um, just based off of that performance, I'd guess at least that um, attacking is harder, but I could really see it going both ways. It's, but ultimately, it's going to come down to the players, their playstyles, and the map, of course. Bitcoin finding the first blood, Rage trading that one out. Bitcoin and Manny uh, going to try trading for each other, but they're both going to go down at some point. GFK, they're now on the attacking side, and they, I think they might be feeling the pain that they were subjecting Team 6 to, as now they are struggling to even find a little bit of the progress that uh, Team 6 did already at this point in the game. So backed up and towards your spawns, you're kind of forced here of JFK to make a or JFK to make some decisions, some quick decisions, especially considering you have members just pushed all the way towards the rooftop of bedroom, but you clear it out and you've reached the zone, so time's going to be stopped at 51 seconds. I like this call from oh. Shelly to get aggressive, but it's read immediately by Bitcoin, and it looks like Team 6 have already fought their way through. It's a clean four down back into the control point. That was going to be huge. That was definitely GFK's moment to fight for control and have the uh, opportunity to go for the attack if they found those two kills, but unfortunately they were able to slide right through and get the kill on the one who was trying to camp them out unfortunately it's not going to be much of an opportunity but valerium fighting he's going to be able to survive that exchange but with 30 seconds on the clock and um, no progress to speak of valerium might be fighting a already lost war but definitely not going to spot stop fighting for any reason as warmer finds his way onto the other side of the map gonna get a kill oh okay if he died there that would have been something to write home about for sure warmer still fighting strong in this catwalk he's finally gonna get taken down but that entire time we're seeing gfk still holding on to this hard point and now maybe they might actually have some meaningful pro progress and they actually are going to be able to secure one of the hard points this is more than team six were able to do in their offensive round they bought themselves some more time and they bought themselves at least one point on the board can they just secure it one more time well we're gonna have to see so that first segment gets it captured rage already i think a couple of these kills fiend kind of dancing around finding his time manny holding things down inside p2 area the office of Manny is staying strong right now. You have Rage taken down. Now it's just one member of Shelly God that you're really worried about. If you're counting names, 
You know that Shelly's been missing, but now he's going to make himself aware. He hops onto the point. Nine playing eights, oh and with that set of kills, it is not only GFK off the on this point, but it's also limiting Team Six. They only have a six versus six right now. This could easily come back to some TDM. Yeah, and now GFK, no respawns remaining. Team Six, they are in a very favorable position, but it could slip away with just one excellent play coming up from GFK, and they've been performing really well so far and they just secure something warmer is going to be out of this game for the time being now we're seeing rage taken out as well it's just 2v4 but with one pick off at the very least 14 seconds on the clock no respawns left for team six it's just valerium and if you want to rely on anyone valerium would be the guy because he was doing so well before unfortunately not going to be able to clutch out the round team six able to take things back and it seems yeah defense uh, or offense is really difficult in this game so far but i think they're slowly starting to figure it out. yeah i would say however you know GFK, they did capture the A zone. So mm -hmm. at least you and I know that they do have some sort Possibly. of an advantage now when it comes down to the uh, objectives of this game mode. So we're tied one apiece. Defense holds true on both sides. I don't think GFK got any progress on that B zone. I think it was just mm -hmm. A that was captured, and that's it. So I'd imagine if I'm going to take a, a rough estimate, I'd put this at maybe three segments to two in favor of GFK, maybe one, depending on how contest heavy that first A zone was for Team 6, but I'd imagine they'd have those two. So back onto the defense for GFK. Nice slide there, bait and switch between Valerium and his teammates, and it's an wow. immediate four off the respawn. This is where you can start pushing those margins up with how clean it was. GFK immediately with a massacre right out of the gate. Bitcoin's gonna get traded out. Valerium doing a great job of holding this angle. Anyone that wants to even find their way onto the hard or the control point is gonna have to answer to him, but they have an answer that he didn't like. It's a bullet to the head. He's gonna be taken down. Now they're gonna be looking towards this pool. You see Bitcoin sieging with one of his teammates, throwing down the trophy. Not sure if he's aware of that warmer. Just Putting healing up, waiting for an opportunity to strike. Rage is going to poke him out even more, but Shelly from the high ground able to take him down. Grenade's going to take down Rage, and it looks like GFK still having full control of this map. And you look at how difficult it is to attack this A zone where you have nobody on offense mm -hmm. sitting on the rooftop of Bedroom, and it just seems like Shelly is open season for these ARs of GFK to rain terror onto these players trying to hop the objective. And with that, it opens an avenue for a flank. Shelly's going to abuse that. He gets him behind three in a row. It's another wipe onto Team 6, sending him back off the respawn with only 30 seconds left and a life advantage of 6. So GFK right now, they're setting themselves up for a big shutdown here on the defensive side. I don't know what happened to GFK from that hard point to now, but something in them has snapped and shifted. They are fully locked in, but maybe not for long is Team 6 finding a really good set of kills. This could open things up for them. They, uh, Shelly is holding this high ground, preventing anyone from really getting up there and causing some trouble. But with Team 6 kind of surrounding the point, they are able to take pool. And if you have the high ground, it doesn't matter. With 110 on the clock, they still have plenty of time. But the lives are slowly going to start dwindling like we saw in the previous one. I wouldn't be surprised if we go back to no respawn situation for teams. I mean, you see that there. It's, you're down to 30 seconds. You hop the zone. You capture it. Now you have a minute to play play for on B. Lives are even, like you called for. Could come down to those respawns, but it's Fiend for a double kill onto the B zone to maybe open up the floodgates Ooh. here from Bitcoin. He's shut down, and it is a big stance there from GFK to hold the line on the B zone and push them back yet again. And off of that aggression, it's immediately going to flood Rage forward. He drops, and Valerium uh, falls as well. So GFK... Not out of deep water just yet. Manny wow. only able to find one on the outside and still keeping this back and forth a little bit vulnerable for the side of Team 6. They just cannot get into the zone safely. Yeah, Spoon's also falling just out of the uh, zone there. 30 seconds on the clock. GFK, they just have to hold a little bit longer. Fiend taking down Valerian as he rotates around, trying to find his teammates in the back. He's not going to allow that to happen. A great Guardian Rage fighting for control, getting inside of the point. It's going to be able to wipe out Team 6 from the hard point, or from the control point, rather. And now it's a desperate last push. Team 6, just 6 lives remaining and 20 seconds on the clock. It looks like this is now or never for them. Toon's going to be able to get the trade out for his teammate, but not going to be able to get that last one. He's going to get taken out. 
out. They're and in. With no respawns left. They have to fight in. Bitcoin's taken down. Nobody for Team Six is on the point. It's the last two lives, last two chances, just tunes remaining. Can he make something happen here? It's unlikely, but he's going to fight for it. He's going to fight to the bitter end. GFK able to take this round as well. Defense still seems to be working for both of these teams, but can Team Six replicate it? But again, um, Defense was really strong for the first round, then we started to see progress made, and now even more progress made. I'd guess Team 6 probably had some more progress than GFK did uh, on this uh, last capture or control point than they did in the They do, and I, I again, I don't think they got any progress over towards B, but you do see that whittling away at that A zone with that height control. It, it makes it so much easier to capture that zone. I'd like to see more teams, especially if we see Skyline, uh, control come into the fray more often through this tournament is off the offense you have to fight for the top of bedroom you have to make sure you have an ar there yeah. just watching over the players inside of the control zone because if not those players on the inside are sitting ducks they're just looking too at too many areas of power positions and that vertical play is not easy especially if it's a sub player on the inside you see fiend mm -hmm. there he's now looking to push forward in the catwalk see if you can shut down this height control from GFK and again force this pseudo spawn trap on a map like Skyline, but Warner, Warner hitting the route all the way underneath the map. So Shelly gonna try to keep some attention on him and give a timing over towards Warmer to hit this flank. Punching a hole up in the defense. GFK opening things up with Warmer on the side. He's gonna get taken down, but hopefully the time that he bought for his team will go to good use. Rage taking down Bitcoin, and now they're gonna be sliding into the zone, but jumping from the heavens. Fiend's gonna rain bullets down. He's gonna get traded out, but it looked beautiful while he was doing it. We still have at least one from GFK near the hard point. Shelly underneath the catwalk, just getting pick off with his teammate and now they're going to be holding for control they just need to find their way up into it but it's a little difficult with the high ground that team six is possessing they have to be careful with when they want to go for it 50 seconds left for gfk that a zone hasn't really been touched by this team the time has just continued to burn down so off the respawn again four down the life lead of team six is what just continues to grow inside of this round of control tunes is the height he slides out valerium Going to take that kill and opens up a little bit. You see again that bottom route from Warmer being run. I'm not sure if anybody's going to be watching this from Team 6 because Warmer actually does get shut down there. Fiend had his eyes on the potential for the flank and Rage is going to be on his own inside of this hill. He is going to be caught by Bitcoin and that is again just forcing these lives out from the side. Bitcoin slides around. He's going to take down Warmer just continuing to tear things apart. Fiend with the help. Valerium alone and the A zone does get captured. Adds another minute in. GFK just barely scraping their way through this. Yeah, but with a lot less lives on the table than in the previous rounds, these teams might not be fighting for control over here long, whether it goes the way of the attack or the defense. We'll have to see as GFK are able to get some pickoffs. That, that's two in a row for them. That's 10 lives. They're going to finally lose warmer there, but as they're fighting for control of that last control point, it's getting close in the lives department. And it does set things up for GFK now. Even if you don't win this round, you have defense. So they don't necessarily have to win this round, but if they do, they it just might. makes their jobs even easier. That's going to be scary. Four down tunes, hitting the flank, okay. and you have a stack on this B zone, so you have to break this as fast as possible. Manny, Fiend's going to find those kills oh there. Bitcoin God. now sliding in, and they get the break back in. Team 6 keeping their chances <laughs> alive here on the control, and they're not giving up without a fight. Unbelievable. Team 6, it's like a flash of lightning, able to take out GFK off of that point and wipe out so many of their lives with Valerium still fighting hard, but from behind, not going to be able to do too much. It's just Rage remaining, and while well, he can maybe get some pickoffs, maybe it's all for some more time, but ultimately, it looks like Team 6 is going to be able to walk away with this, and this is going to be the most significant clutch of all time. <laughs> Rage looking for something here, but with that sub, he's not going to be able to find the victory in those ranges. It Team gets six. close. It's it's back to back to back rounds where it's been a one v four or one v three for the attacking scary. team, but it just definitely seems like for that A zone you are getting a lot of lives lost. Yeah. Before you even have a chance to go over towards B and for teams you know that are looking to master control fast here at TXP four, it just seems like whoever can hold on to the lives on the attacking side a little bit better. You know, give yourself those chances on offense over towards B, especially for Skyline. You're going to have those opportunities. So um, heading into this round five, it's GFK on the defense. 
to hopefully keep this defense streak going and take map number three and give them advantage in this series. Team six, they've gotten close before. Let's see if they can crack the code of offense. Yeah, now GFK in the comfortable of defense. Maybe this could come down to Team 6 really just figuring it out and cracking the code of attacking, like you said. But looking unlikely right now is GFK has full control of this map. They're slowly starting to find their way in. Shelly God, however, is going to take down Fiend as he tried to get a little too sneaky with it. A nice exchange on the bottom of the map. GFK is going to win that one and not allowing Team 6 to get control off the back line. And I think that's the main attack strategy we've been seeing coming out so far. Team just play for the bottom or top and then wrap around and get the pickoffs off all those on the defensive side on the back and opens up time for their team to attack the control point. But now we're seeing real damage being done to the lives of Team 6. 20 to 8. They are losing so much every time they try to make something happen. And it seems that the attacking on A is getting slaughtered for both teams as this goes on. As they're not able to find a lot of success. It's looking really messy. And GFK with 25 lives to 17. Time of Team 6. Now 16 with 21 seconds left and no progress to speak of. It was scary for Team 6. Yeah, not much to work with here if you're Team 6. This is GFK really stepping up in round five of their defense. Manny's going to overextend over towards B, see if he can hold this clock a little bit longer for the side of Team Six, and it does allow a way in towards A. Manny now can hit the flank, see if he can catch some of these players trying to rotate three in a row. Manny, 40 and 30 here in the control of Skyline, and he has given his team a second chance now on this attack. You see the kills coming through from Team Six. They have members on the point. Rage is going to try his best, but he's going to be in a two versus one. Warmer dropping, Ooh. won't be able to drop into a kill. Instead, this is Team Six now looking to put their mark into the round. It should be the A zone captured. And they finally find it, but at what cost? Just seven lives, now six in the bank. GFK having doubled, now more than doubled the lives of Team Six. They have a minute, sure, but the margin of error is so slim. And with how hard they fought for uh, just this first point, I'm wondering if they're close to it. And they're losing lives by the second. It's just two left on, or three left on the side of Team Six. One more respawn they got coming through. Uh, Rage rotating around, see if you can find any pickoffs. 36 seconds. GFK super comfortable in the position that they're in right now. But they can't get too sloppy, but Team 6 now just down to two members. It's looking to be in the back for GFK. Yeah, it looks like GFK should be able to slot this one in for a map victory. Diving out the windows and taking the skyline control. It's GFK now lead the series 2-1. to one. Mm -hmm in series count so this is setting them up now for a lot of confidence heading into the next map of rewind hard point so back in towards that hard point area is the only map that team six was able to win and will they have that chance to send it to a map five search and destroy but first we got to highlight a couple of things that we did see in this map i was really harping on the offensive side mm -hmm. losing those lives so often so easily fighting for that top of mid is going to be crucial for Skyline, especially for those ARs to, you know, be that anchor. You don't have to be the one to make the play. You just have to allow for those players to make the play exactly. to have safety on the point. And we never really saw that yeah. on the attacking side of Skyline. Everybody <laughs> tries to fight for mid and then push through that catwalk. You need to get that A zone, and you can't get that A zone without that protection on point. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to see if those changes can happen on Skyline for the future for some of these teams who want to go to control on this map. But for a first look at... Control on BO6, yeah, it's defensive sided, but it's you know, nothing that we're not used to here in COD. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like how you kind of broke that down. When it comes to that defensive, or rather the offensive play, it, it really is so positionally based. You have to have control of certain aspects of the map. They're, they're prerequisites. You cannot capture certain elements without doing some um, aspects first. And they might not be on the control point, but if you want to get to the control point, you got to be holding down those higher angles and make sure that you can yeah. buy time for your teammates to get in. If you can't do that, their, their offense is as good as dead. And I'm not saying that team players weren't trying to do that. You saw Manny it's oftentimes hard. was going for the overextension plays, trying yeah. to punish them, those members on uh, defense off of their respawns. But it's just how quickly you were able to react if you're the defensive team, play those 2v1s, play those 3-on-1s. They were able to track those players down mm. easily. And uh, even at one point, we saw Shelly God attempt to do it. 
uh, for the side of GFK. And it, it doesn't work out, but it gives you more time if you're the attacking team to get on towards that A zone. So it's not like the teams were snag stagnant in mm -hmm. what they were trying to do. You saw some players look to force some creativity into their style of play, but it, it didn't pay off in the long run. And for GFK, you see them on screen right here, now leading the series 2-1, to one, heading into the hard point. We're going back to Rewind, and on the Search and Destroy, this team looked fantastic on Rewind S&D. Different ballpark when we're playing Hardpoint. Mm -hmm. It's a complete change of pace, and Team 6, they looked good in that pace. When it's able to be mixy, you can make those mistakes, but still come out with the kills. I think that this Team 6 squad is somebody you want to overlook when it comes down to these hard points. Yeah, Team 6, they were able to find a lot of success in that first hard point. Maybe it was just the map, maybe it was just the nerves. For these teams, but GFK two in a row since then, are they going to be able to show us that they have what it takes on this hard point, or Team Six just going to be able to slaughter them like they did in that first game? Because let's be real, it was close, but near the end, Team Six were completely dominating them, and they already have a 12 to 50 lead over GFK. But of course, that can close at any time. As you see, I'm warmer already on the the hard point, and with the Coming through, he's going to be a, a bit of a thorn that's going to be hard to remove from the side of Team 6, but they're going to be definitely trying to damn this, but while they're waiting for the next hard point to spawn, it's just playing for scraps at this point. Yeah, that second hard point heading over towards the back of blue and setting up outside. You have the spawns right now for your Team 6, so you're able to get that lockdown, but you lose the fights, and that's just an easy break for GFK from the front. You still have Manny just trying to stay alive back here. He's going to be spotted, waiting for their teammates to hopefully come to his rescue and they do give Manny another chance at this one so hopefully Manny can just continue to stay alive for the squad he turns around he takes down the player now looking to flank himself and Shelly the furthest one pushed up just tucked away he's not able to stay alive so it's a good break from team six to get back into this hill yeah and I feel like this is the first time well not anymore, but GFK had a lead for the first time in hardpoint all series long, but they're fighting super hard for this hardpoint down here. 20 seconds remaining tunes, trying to mow them down with the bullets from a little bit further away, but not able to find their heads. They are doing a great job of tucking in and holding this point without losing anything right now. 35, it's just 10 seconds left, and you can already see Team 6, they're sending one further away on the next hardpoint already. They're already rotating towards it. They're even going to get the scrap on on the last hard point they were just fighting for and immediately controlling the next one. Team 6, they're doing a great job of hopping from hard point to hard point while preventing GFK from doing the same. Yeah, I'd say this is probably one of the harder kills to break. Nice. Uh, for GFK, they have that player already set up in the hill. You have a chance to maybe even set up on the dumpster. And this is where we're probably going to see majority of the time get picked up from these teams to push their lead. You have a member... For Team 6, it's Manny, who's hopefully going to try to get in, but the car bomb's going to get the trade for GFK. Bitcoin's now making the flank of the warmer. He's not going to read this, and there's the break for Team 6, waiting for the flank to come into play. They utilize Bitcoin now to hopefully hold this rotation for P4 over towards the back of yellow. Now to have things set up for Team 6, just maintaining again, like we saw on the uh, Skyline hardpoint, a marginal lead. Mm -hmm. Marginal lead is a lead nonetheless with Scrap coming through and there looks to be a fight coming out for the next hard point. Who's going to win this one? Rolf's going to be surviving and now with the numbers favoring Team 6, they're going to already have control of this next hard point. GFK, for whatever reason, they just aren't able to press control from Team 6 when it comes to making these patients, but at the very least, they're fighting hard and they're fighting yeah. back. They have control of this hard point for now and it's going to be really difficult for Team 6 to really get back on control. And they've already spawned Team 6 out, so Bitcoin's the only one in the back line who's just hoping to stay alive buy some time for the rest of the team it's enough but it's not enough to allow for the players to win their fights it's good from warmer it finds a double kill just keeping team six away from this a seven point game here in p4 of the first rotations and gfk have the spawns so they're just going to be able yeah. to reinforce this hill again and again you have nobody here to spawn out gfk because you're just not able to stay alive for that to happen. Fiend slides in, but he's got the back up there. Shelly God watching over Rage. And he keeps JFK now in a lead of their own. They flip things out for what seems like the first time we've seen in a while. They have a lead.
I think this really goes to show the importance of spawns. <laughs> Obviously, everybody knows that, but if you needed an example, there it is. You see how easy it was for them to just con completely control that hard point just because the spawns were already pre baked for them. All the respawns yeah. off the opposite side of the map for Team Sexes, there's really nothing they can do about it besides just keep trying to fight for control. But speaking of fighting for control, both teams desperately clawing at each other to hold control of this hard point, and GFK with the 100. Oh, that spoke too soon. Still at 99 as they're fighting for control again. Yeah, GFK just holding strong on the inside. Still 30 seconds. That Team 6 don't want to give up, but they just cannot get a read on any of these players. The corners are being held by GFK for generators, and the lead just continues to grow. If you're afraid of, if you're a fan of this Team 6 Ooh. squad, but the team kill from Fiend, oh, wow. he is going to make his way in, but at what cost? Bitcoin now on the flank. Slides out with the Strider, not able to get a second one. Rage holding strong for the moment, and it's enough to keep this lead for GFK. Back into the second set of rotations now we go. First hill looking to open up. And the first one here is Shelly God looking for some assistance to the rest of the team. Rage gets there in time. And oh Rage with a double kill, keeping JFK inside the hill. GFK once again establishing a strong lead and again their first hard point performance they didn't have a lead a single time for them to be doing this well is unprecedented in the very small series we've seen from them but still Team 6 they've been doing so well in the hard point historically and now they are doing even stronger battle hitting back hard against GFK they're on this hard point they don't want to leave Team 6 they're coming at them from all angles but GFK able to win all the gunfights to hold control of this hard point 20 seconds left and they're still fighting hard for it Team 6, they are struggling, but they're getting those final picks. They need tunes, just not able to get that last one. As long as they're fighting kills, this is okay. You have to spawn if you're Team 6, but True. The last wow. time wow. around for P2, you were broken in an instant. This time, you need to find these opening kills. Unfortunately, Shelly God going to find the first one of the Fiend, quickly traded there by Manny. And now for the team to lock things down, stake their claim towards this hard point. You're looking at Fiend to be that difference maker. He's stunned up. It gets a little bit chaotic. And it's three down for Team Six. They're spawning out. Yeah, they are some spawning on the complete opposite side of the map. At this point, GFK, they have full control, but they have one more Bitcoin. He's rotating on the left side. I don't think they know he's even here. And if he comes out the perfect opportunity, this could be a massacre for GFK. But Toons, he's going to be doing his own massacring on this hard point. And there it is. Team 6 busts it open and find their way on this hard point once and for all. Finally, they were struggling super hard with those spawns going the way of GFK. But no, they actually have control once again. But that last kill is what they needed to get control back. But time's already kind of out on this hard point. Yeah. GFK already fighting for what might be the next one over on three and they have control of it well you're fighting for scraps right now if you're a team six and even though you're getting the rotations you're getting no time on these hills gfk have garnered yeah. a 57 point lead and you can see bitcoin quite like last time on p3 is looking to hit a flank this time the adaptations from gfk is they're sending a member over there that's valerium to try to see if they can assist for those back spawn controls it works out enough for a little bit of a chaotic back and forth and it's going to keep gfk inside of this hard point within their lead now pushing even further they can't win on this hill mm. but they can look to make this impossible for team six because of how different this lead is looking they're looking to push 230 after this hill's done yeah and it's gonna be a beautiful lead to behold if they're able to pull it through rage doing his best and winning the exchange that he really needed to on that hard point team six spawning not too far away but it is once again they're fighting for scraps at this point they should be looking for the next point and that's gonna be where gfk are already having their feet planted it's already underneath them they just have to wait for it and Team 6, sure, they're going to get these three points back. Not even going to get the rest of it as they're getting killed off. And GFK already, but already there on the next one. But Fiend, he's there too. And he's taking down just one more. Hill. Can he get that one more kill to just at least slow down the push from GFK? Get a spawn out from Rage. He can maybe punish a couple of these players while looking to get back to the hill. Cuts off Manny. Fiend's going to find two. Nobody's in the hill to stop this time. And Fiend's not even able to break. 227, 39 seconds. You win here point. if you're a GFK. Not just in the map, but in the series as well. And they know that Rage just yep. roaring into this game number four. Coming alive when it comes down to the slaying. And GFK are not losing their fights. Not wanting to lose this series. And looking to kick off their pool play win with a success and a victory here in the best of five.
GFK doing a fantastic job recovering from their first game, the loss of the series, and coming back three in a row, not dropping a single map after that. They figured it out. This team is learning fast. They're adapting, doing a great job in this first game of the day. And in game number one, Team Six, they were out slaying in that skyline. It's what yeah. kept them alive. Map four comes around, it's rewind hardpoint, and it just seems like as the game got went on, Rage just was upgrading and upgrading for this team. And it seemed like Shelly God and Rage were not losing gunfights on that map number four. They looked incredible on the rewind hardpoint. We take a look back at the stats as well, and it does reflect for that second we got to see it, but <laughs> it was incredible from the side of GFK, the way that they're just able to come alive there, outslay the side of Team Six. And even on rotations, when Team Six were trying to punish those flanks, just try to get those spawns away, they were never able to hold those spawns. And you always saw maybe Shelly God or Rage popping off with one or two kills to continue to keep the side of Team Six reeling. And something that's still in my head, I'll never forget it. This is like a strong memory on the uh, second map or third map rather, it was the uh, control point. It was the fourth round, I think, and it was so scary because yeah. GFK, they they were, they were super close in lives, and it looked like they were going to steal the game away on the attacking side, and then out of nowhere, Team 6 completely just, it was like a in the blink of an eye, GFK was wiped off of the point, and they had the, t the life lead. I say all this to say I was really expecting them to actually come back to life in that last map because of that performance they had. I really thought that, okay, in these scrappy situations where both teams are really low and back against the wall, Team 6 is able to continually win changes. But GFK, proving that fear wrong that I had and were able to kind of overcome the one uh, yeah. factor that we thought Team 6 had over them, which is their scrappiness. And GFK were able to bring it back in the end and, you know, upgrade. And it does help that they were able to get that defense in the round five of control. I mean, that just seems to make yeah, for sure. life a lot easier when it comes down to these teams. Not going to be the most... Uh, I'd say practiced when it comes to control across the weekend. So we're going to have to see how things level up from today all the way across from tomorrow. But that's only the beginning here at TXP4. Game number one done and dusted. We wrap it up and we get to move forward on main stage. We're going to be switching up the teams, mm -hmm. continuing through pool play, folks. We'll take a break here on the desk and we'll return shortly with more TXP, some Call of Duty Black Cup 6. You don't want to miss it.